let's talk about watercolor for a moment. Watercolor can come in a bunch of different states. You can buy it as a hard puck form, or you can buy it as almost like a jelly and a semi-soft. You can buy it as a squishable, out of the tube kind of paint. You can also get it as a liquid form, almost like a, what you would think is food coloring kind of consistency, uh, very liquidy. All of these work well, they're in concentrated form. Uh, they all have a little bit different sort of properties. Most people go with the, the pucker palette type to start off with. They're sort of the easiest to use and you don't end up overusing them. A lot of time what I do in the school is I'll squish out tubes into these, let them dry out and then students can get the hang of it from there. The next thing that we want to talk about is when you buy paints, a lot of the time you're getting what you pay for. So for example, if you're buying dollar store paint versus an artist grade paint, what you're getting is artist grade paint has a hundred percent pigment load. They can't cram any more color particles to binder in there. And the quality of that pigment is much better. So it's not going to fade in the sun. You're going to get better mixes out of it. The color is going to be a lot richer. You, you really get what you pay for. Um, starting with students or novice grade paint, which is sort of 50 to 75% pigment load. It, it's not too costly, but it will give you some really nice colors. So let's get started with watercolor for super beginners. Today we're doing watercolor basics. I have a few different materials set out. We have watercolor, just as sort of dry squished out pigment. We have watercolor pencil crayons. So they are sticks of color that are water soluble. We have water soluble crayons, which is you can lay down a lot of bright colors quickly. We have oil pastels, which provide a good resist to the watercolor. We have an inking pen, which is waterproof when it's dry. And then a very light pencil to do our sketches with. Also have sort of two simple brushes here, which might be something along the line that's in your kit, and two containers for water, one for always accessing clean water and one for washing or paintbrush. Water is the vehicle in which the color travels, so if there's no water, the color doesn't spread out very well. Um, sometimes if you have too much water, then it just spreads out in abundance and gives you sort of tie-dye effects, which are really cool. Um, with watercolor, there happens to be a lot of um, mistakes we'll say that are made but they're not really mistakes they're more oh techniques that you just haven't discovered yet and didn't quite want it in that spot often if you take a look at a, a funny ripple or the way that the colors have sort of mixed together in a way you didn't expect take a look at that and imagine that for your next piece sometimes you get some really nice blue ripples and go ooh I could use that with water that would be perfect and then already you've got your idea for your next piece all right so let's quickly look at our watercolor so, we're going to start off with sort of a wet on wet kind of technique where I dip my paintbrush into the water, I make sure it's saturated, and I grab two or three globs of water and put it into the color of paint that I want. So for example, I'm going with a really nice blue. Now this blue is a concentrated pigment, so it looks extremely dark as just a color blob but as you see as I pull the water out and it saturates into the blob we have ourselves a nice blue so to do a wet on wet I take my brush I would wash it and then wet a certain area with no color and then I grab my really wet blob of water that's been pigmented blue and I plop the color in and you can see how it sort of blobs around. If I want a richer color, then I pick up more of the color and blob it in there too. And you can see how the color spreads out nicely. Now we can do that with other colors as well. So I wash my paintbrush, I gather more water into my purple or violet, and I can blob that in too, and you can see how the colors sort of spread out. And this is what I mean by color travels within the water. The water is a vehicle in which the color sort of moves around with. If I just try and take my paintbrush and put it on dry, 
it doesn't really spread out all that much. Wash my paintbrush again, and I can pick up a new color. I'm going to go with my crimson red, so I put on two blobs to sort of activate the color. I brush over the blob a little bit, activating it, you know, depending on how much I brush over, will concentrate the pigment more. Now if I lay down my color beside it, you can see that they sort of overlap, giving you this sort of interesting effect. And it's how you play around with these interactions that end up making a finished watercolor picture. Now if you're looking for a little bit more control, you can go to a smaller sort of round brush. So I'm grabbing a bit of this orangey yellow here. I'm working dry. Now you can really see with the round that if I depress a lot I get a big thick line and if I just depress lightly I can get little hair lines. Alright. So it's amazing the range or variety that you can get in your brush strokes by just adjusting the pressure. So I'm only playing around here at the moment, folks. You can play around as well if you like. There we go. Got some neat waves. Great. We can do similar things like this with, say, a pencil crayon. So let's say a red. You can color in your red. If you press quite hard or if you go over the same area a lot of times that'll be a bright rich red as soon as you add the water. Now you can fade your color by adding less pigment by pressing more softly by laying your pencil down more so you're only dropping a little bit of material at a time. I like to do this part in little tiny circles to get the fade more even, sort of nice gradient. You can then take a new color like, oh, yellow. And we can take yellow from this side and blend and mix that into our red, giving us more of an orangey kind of color. So we should be able to get a, a pretty neat fade between the two of them. There we go. Now my recommendation is to go from your lighter color, activate it by rubbing some water over top, and drawing that yellow, say, into your orange and then into your red. The red is a stronger color and will take over your, your yellow quite quickly. So once I've got it all activated, I can pull a bit of that red back into my yellow and we can start to get a nice gradient between the two. My red is pretty orange, so I'm going to go back to adding more red beside the color. Now I grabbed a different red, something slightly more to the crimson kind of red, or the purplier red. Activate that red. Blend it back into my orange. There we go. Now you can do similar things with the crayons. They are solid sticks of pigment. You can lay down some bright color quickly. They feel like the oil pastel. I don't really know what I'm drawing, I'm just playing around. You activate the color and you can see how rich that color is. There we go. Now this is the fun part. We're gonna use oil pastel. I'm gonna start off with a really soft blue. And then grab my other blue, my watercolor, and put color around it. And as you see, 
the oil pastel resists the watercolor. So that can be a lot of fun, especially if you're doing white with clouds and then you paint the entire sky blue and poof, suddenly your, your clouds appear. That's always lots of fun. Wash the paintbrush and add more color onto it. So when I put a transparent layer on top of a color that already exists, that's a glaze. So here I want the blue to be a bit darker. So I glaze in the second blue. And if I want the color to fade into the other colors I've already got, I can just add a bit of water, pull that color out. There we go. And now it looks natural as if the blue to purple fade it really got that dark first try, which it did. I do. Don't tell. Next in here, I want this to be a little more turquoise. Not quite strong enough. I add more water. Wash the green around a bit. There we go. So if I were going for a seaweed effect, that would be a really cool way to do it. All right. Now, if we were to go more pictorial, I have myself a blue jay. All right. Now, I probably won't be doing the entire blue jay, just on him. I'm going to set him over the top of my pencil crayon for a moment, and I'm going to sketch it out. Now I'm using a 4H, oh actually a 6H, that'll do. You just can't press very hard or it'll inscribe the paper, it'll create little dents in the paper that you'll see sort of forever. You want to be really gentle when you're using something like a 4H or a 2H or a 6H. I'm going to start with the body, which is just a circle, and decide if I'm happy with that size. And then I'm going to put a wing on. He's not quite that fat. Turn them down a bit. Tail feathers at a different angle at the bottom. Head. Up more like that. And we can always erase any of the lines we don't like later. But at the moment, it's so early in the game, I'm not sure I like or dislike them. So I'm just going to continue doing my sketch. There we go. That's sort of enough for me to get started. I can put in a little bit of the coloring for the wings so I have an idea when I'm drawing it out. Alright, next we're going to talk about inking. So inking to most people is tracing, which is not quite correct. We want to make sure that we ink only the lines that we want, and that's where inking is different from tracing. So uh, if I were to ink every line that I wrote on here, I'd be making a lot of extra lines and a lot of extra mistakes. I am going to tackle anything that, to me, looks sort of black or extremely dark, and I'm going to start outlining them first. I don't want to, if I outline everything like a coloring book, then it's going to look a little more cartoony or illustrative. Which, as a beginner, is a pretty good effect, but you know, I myself am looking for a little more of a, a goal to get better at watercolor. I would try and avoid the pen and try and do most of my image with the watercolor. But that's just me. Everybody likes to do it their own way. And that's okay too. I'm asking myself a bunch of times, 
okay, what's lighter, what's darker? Which blue is this? Some of the blues in here are sort of turquoisey, where some of them are more red, which would be more ultramarine blue. So there's sort of a variety of different hues of blue at different tints or different shades. So I need to make sure I sort of pick up on those. Now I'm going to pick the lightest of the blue first, which is sort of the turquoisey green one, which is your uh, phthalo blue. So lighter colors go on first. They're the ones that are the most watered down. They're the palest of colors because these, those can be covered up easily. My next layer of darker blue can cover over that turquoise blue quite quickly. I'm picking up some more, putting here in the back colors. Now here, it kind of fades out into other colors. So I'm not too worried about trying to keep it in the lines. I'm just more worried about getting the area in. There we go. And let the color fade out. So the purpler color I put on top can fade into the blue better. Now in some areas where I think it might be a brighter turquoise, like the top of the ring here, I can go back with a bit more of the blue and pull that color out soft to get a bit of a gradient. Here where it's a little bit stark, I again just add a bit of water to it to let it sort of wash out. Now in, in one spot, I should have left a little bit more white. So what I do, I sort of pinch out the water from my paintbrush and I can lift the color back a bit. Pretty well you turn your brush into a sponge and you pull out the color where you don't want it. It's the closest thing we have to an eraser in watercolor. There. Now we're going to go to my purple and blue, my ultramarine. Now here in the top of the head, where I notice it first, it's quite dark at the tip and then sort of fades around the head lighter. So I put in my rich color first, I make it quite dark, wash my paintbrush, dry it a little bit, and pull the color out. So that way it gets lighter and lighter. A touch more water to make it a bit more even. There we go. And I can always go back over that with a second layer of blue. I'm gonna grab just a little bit more blue from my palette. Give them just a bit of blue under here. Now that's too strong. So I go back with a bit of water and thin my color out. There we go. Because in the face isn't quite a stark white. Uh, it's kind of a, a washed out blue to me. If anything is gonna remain white, it's gonna be near the belly. Other places to put that same ultramarine right here in the feathers and sort of wraps around to the back of the head. Now here I'm going to go right over top of the black too. Down into the back and blend it into my turquoise color. Now be very mindful if it's wet. You can make a huge mess of your turquoise color. Mine's a little bit wet so it blends, but if it's too wet it'll make a mess. While it's still wet in the dark blue area, I'm gonna go back over it. Again, with sort of a richer, more intense blue. I really like the way that this is sort of bleeding out, so I'm not gonna overwork it. I'm just gonna dab it to let the color spread out a little bit further, adding tiny bits of water that are already on my brush. You better like that. Happy with that so far back to the darker blue. Now being very mindful not to touch this other blue, if it does, the color will leach out into everywhere. I'm only putting a little bit of this dark blue in. Now there's a lot more darker blue in the end of the tail feathers. And you can see it goes right over top of the turquoise nicely. I want it to fade out a bit, so I'm just going to add a bit more water. 
paid that for that. Excellent. I'm happy with that so far. Great. Now that that's dry, I'm going to start putting on some of the background. Now you can put whatever kind of color you want. So far the orange and the blue I find to be a nice complementary kind of color. I'm going to use some of the yellow first. Now here I've got a lemon yellow, which is slightly to the green side. And then I have an orangey yellow, which is probably the most primary of the ones I've got here. But if I mix the two together, I'm going to get more of a neutral yellow, the brightest yellow it can be. And I'm going to start blocking those colors on. I want it fairly rich, so I'm not going to add as much water. I'm going to just mix more paint up in really bright yellow areas, even against my bird. Now anywhere that sort of goes into the bird will be sort of greenish where it's blue. Pop in some orange, let it mix in from the yellow just slightly. I'm using my large wide brush. Add my really large in the skin of me. Now I'm skipping over the feet because the legs and the feet are much darker than the orange I'm applying. So they'll cover right over the orange as if it's not there. And then we have some continuity through the legs. Sometimes if you stop and start and stop and start, it doesn't look the same through one end or the other. Same with my stick here. My orange in my stick isn't going to matter too much because the dark brown I'm going to put over top of it will look just fine. Now here where I've left the color dry a little bit, I may never get rid of that line and it'll always be there. Yeah. Also, the area that I wanted white, I didn't paint it white, I left it white. I put the yellow and the orange and the red around it, which revealed sort of where the white was. The blue that I put in the face earlier has dried and it's much lighter now that I've got the other colors around it. A little stronger under the skin. Now I've got this interesting bleed effect down here. Uh, I really like it. It's not really what I wanted for that area. The stick sort of over bleeds into my sky. I'm just going to take my brush, soften it up a little bit, make it part of the picture, and when that dries a little more, I'll define the stick a little bit better. All right, folks, let's talk about details. Now you can put details in with a paintbrush. And just be really, really careful. You can use the watercolor pencil crayons. You can use regular pencil crayons. Oh, if it's all dry, you could use marker. Watercolor is a good beginning to any type of uh, medium you want to go after that. And turning your watercolors into this media is a, is a great way to go. Um, I could even do sort of details in pastel and paint over them. Actually, that's a good idea. I'm going to try a little bit of pastel in the wing area where I want it to be a little bit lighter and preserved. So I can color it in. And sort of chunks here. A little strong. Pull a little bit of that color. It into my tree trunk. Actually, I think it looks quite nice, just I don't want it there. I lift it out and sort of push it around into the rest of the stick. 
I got a little carried away in a couple of other places and just gonna soften a little bit of water. Paintbrush. There we go. So that looks kind of neat. So uh, I've now turned it into a mixed media project. I can also go over with other blues to get my details, say in the wings. So this is a way of us getting a little bit more precise without having the difficulty of watercolor. Now again, this is a good sort of beginner technique. You would want to try and... Oh, you can make little goals for yourself. Some of my goals is to use these kind of techniques less and less and less and rely more strictly on my watercolor. So I just soften you a little bit and you can see how the water picks up on the stronger color in the areas. And that helps with a little bit more of my feather details. If I went over it too much, then those lines would have disappeared. So I had to be really careful of that. Got a darker blue in here. And you can just leave it as a pencil crown too if you want. You leave it to a darker blue. So this can help me blend a bit more in areas that I thought could have used a bit more. There we go. Now if it's completely dry, I could go back over it with pen. If you try and go over it with pen while it's still wet, uh, you'll ruin your pen. Now that my brown and my stick's a bit drier, That's the intensity I was looking for originally, but it was too wet. It kept on sort of lobbing out into other places. Now I'm letting it sort of blend into my wet brown. Careful around my blue, it's still wet. There we go. Much happier with that. And when that dries, I can then put the last of the details on my feet. We're only a few minutes away from being done this one. Alright, it's dry in the feet, or where I want to put the feet, I should say. Now, if I have any pencil lines showing, I can let it dry completely and just erase over top of them as if they weren't even there. Most of your pencil lines and things like that just disappear after you watercolor. Some last details. Let's say I didn't quite leave enough white in some places. I can go back over it with a white pencil crayon. In this case, the white watercolor. And just bring back some of those areas to a little more white. There we go. I think I'm finished this one. Always make sure that you sign your work. If you like your work, sign your name at the front. If you don't like your work, sign your name at the back. You should always sign your name. I recommend dates too. They're usually great reference to see where you were and how far you've come. And, uh, you could treat them as sort of historical documents, if you will. So, uh, anyway, I highly recommend you sign your work. All right, thanks very much. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Uh, all of those little things can, can go a long way. You can take a look at my Patreon as well. Thank you very much for your uh, support and your attention. All right, have a good day.